Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stav and today I'm going to be bringing you a video that's all about how to get started on your journey to concealed carry. If you saw my how I got into shooting video, you'll know that I got into shooting and concealed carry through my big sister. But I know that some of you out there might not have someone to guide you on that journey. So I'm going to give you some tips and practical steps that you can take to get yourself going on the way to concealed carry. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please keep watching because I'm going to show you how to go from this. I thought you said to bring extra magazines. To this. Let's get started with my first tip. Taking a basic safety course might not be a requirement in your state. The laws in each state vary, so I recommend going online and reading about the laws in your state. I'm going to give you a couple websites you can check out that are really good for summarizing laws in your state. So if you go to handgunlaw.us, it's going to give you a map of the United States and you would click on your state. For me, it's Massachusetts and it'll give you Massachusetts gun laws. One of the first paragraphs is how to apply for a permit. So this website's really helpful because it gives a nice summary and you'll know what you need to do in order to apply for your permit. Another website that's really good is usconcealedcarry.com. It's very, oh, oh, Natasha. So if you go to usconcealedcarry.com, you want to go to resources and then reciprocity map and gun laws and click on that you click on your state and it gives you some stats on your state and then a summary of the laws and if you scroll down there is permit information which gives the requirements on how to apply for a permit for my fellow females out there a great place to find a safety course is through the nra's women on target program I have volunteered at a few women on target programs as a range instructor. They're really great classes. I took one myself when my sister wanted to apply for her license. It's a day where you do a basic safety course, so it's an instructor talking to you about the basics of how to be safe with firearms. And then a lot of the times you actually get to shoot both pistols and long guns, sometimes even bows and arrows, so it's a really fun day and at the end of it you get a safety certificate and that's what you can use to apply for your license. It's a really fun day, and if you want to find one, it's really easy. You just go to their website, WOT, as in women on target, dot NRA, dot org. You put in where you are, and then it will list upcoming women on target events in your area. The next step would be to apply for your license. Some states don't require this at all, so you need to know what is required in your own state. So go back to those two websites I mentioned and find out what's required in your state. But if your state does require an application, then you need to get an application. I recommend going to the website of your local police department and there's usually a link there to get the application. If not, just do a Google search and you should be able to pull it up. And when you pull up the application, you'll see that it asks you for an application type. So you would be applying for a license to carry. Even if you're not sure you'll ever want to carry, I definitely recommend checking that box in case you ever do want to carry so you can have the option. And then you fill out a bunch of your information, answer some yes or no questions. And then again, when it asks you for your reason for requesting a license, I would check off unrestricted. You want to be able to have the option to carry if you choose to do so in the future. And make sure you read all the requirements that are necessary for wherever you're applying. Some places require you to have letters of recommendation for people who know you. After you do whatever is necessary to apply for your license, I recommend going to the range with either a friend who's knowledgeable about firearms or with an instructor. If you have a range near you that offers time with an instructor, that's a great way to get more hands-on experience with different firearms. If you don't already know someone who shoots, there are always organizations within your state where you can find people to shoot with. For example, I live in Massachusetts and I'm part of the Mass Women Gun Owners, which is a great group. You can find other women to shoot with, people to get advice from, so you can usually find a group like that within your state. 
for women, there's also the Well-Armed Woman, and that's an organization that has chapters in, I think, 48 of the 50 states. So that's another great way to get plugged into a group of shooters if you're a woman and you don't know anybody else who shoots. Start getting more comfortable with different firearms and different calibers. Try out anything you can. I've always made it a rule to never say no to trying a new firearm. And just be open to trying new things. You might figure out you like something that you didn't know you would like. If you're unsure about what you should be trying, if your focus is concealed carry, I do have a video on choosing a concealed carry gun that you might want to check out. I will link it below so you can watch that video to get some ideas on what you might want to try when you go to the range. After you find a gun that you're comfortable shooting and are willing to train with, that's when it's time to find your holster. And if this was super easy and I just had like one holster to recommend to you, I wouldn't really have much to talk about on my channel since I do so much unconcealed carry. But there are so many different types of holsters for you depending on how you dress and your lifestyle. So you might find that you develop a large collection of holsters because the first one you buy probably won't be your favorite and you'll start trying new ones and figure out what you like. So this is my big bag of holsters and it is overflowing with different types of holsters that I've tried or used. Some haven't worked, some have, so you might find that you end up with a lot of holsters, but that's just the way it goes. There's a lot in there. And this collection's only growing. Don't be discouraged if the first holster you try is not a good one. The first one I bought, I bought it online. It was kind of cheap and I didn't really know what to look for yet. So it's a learning process, but just keep trying until you find one that works for you. Or in my case, a lot of them. Taking additional classes is something that you can do even before you've even applied for your license to carry. Some classes like lecture classes don't require a license to carry, whereas live fire classes might depending on where you're going. But lecture classes usually don't require a license to carry since you're not going to be shooting. And the more knowledge you can get, the better, especially when you're going to apply in an area where they make it more difficult to get your license. They like to see more certificates to prove that you are responsible and furthering your education about firearms and firearm safety. This folder here is full of certificates from classes that I've taken. So in here I've got first aid from the Red Cross. I also have trauma class certifications, instructor certification, classes focusing on the law because you don't get that most of the time during just the basic safety course. And especially if you're going to conceal carry, take a concealed carry class because that's when you'll learn when you can draw, when you can use what type of force, and that's super important if you're gonna be carrying a gun. So take as many classes as you can, build up your resume, get a whole mess of certificates and that will really help you out along your concealed carry journey. After you've gone through all these steps and you've gathered all this knowledge, it's great to share it with other people. And this is a personal choice. You might not want people to know that you shoot or carry a firearm, and that's fine. But for me, I wanted to share this knowledge because it's something that I'm very passionate about and want to share with other people. And I was very surprised to realize when I started telling people that I shoot, how many people wanted to go to the range with me and learn about firearms or just how to be safe with guns. And it was so great for me to be able to share my knowledge with these people. And I'd say in the first year I had my license, I took at least like 30 or 40 people to the range. I was taking people constantly, which was great because I got to share something that's really important to me and be able to educate others. And that doesn't mean you have to become an instructor, which is a great thing to do if that's something that you're interested in but just sharing your knowledge with others could be something that changes their lives. If my sister never took me to the range, I don't know what I'd be doing today. Share your knowledge with others and pass it on. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video and for watching my video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about this process that I just went through, please leave me a comment or send me a message on my social media and I would be more than happy. Helpy? and I would be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Remember, if you guys have any specific ideas you'd like to see in terms of content from my channel, please let me know. I am always looking for new ideas on information that I can share with you guys. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you back on my channel soon. Bye. Cut. I need one of those things.